being a new parent is stressful. It's kind of like owning a cat, except it's louder, it refuses to use its litter box, and if you ignore it, it'll resent you at your funeral. It makes sense why so many 2B parents attend Lamas and prenatal classes. If you feel prepared, you're probably forgetting something. Could that something be a mouthful of your afterbirth? Today's episode is on the health benefits of consuming placenta after childbirth. As always, we recommend speaking with your doctor about you and your baby's needs before going ahead with any alternative medical practices. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Have you been feeling run down after giving birth? Have you been looking for a hot boost to your breast milk production? Do you want to be like your favorite celebrities? Well, try placenta. It's the newest, hottest diet trend that every mammal on Earth does except for us. And camels. Don't ask me why, I tried to find out, but that'll be a mystery for another day. Placentophagy. It's amazing. It's incredible. It's making me uncomfortable. Can we stop now? Cat, cat. I almost got enough. Remember, you really gotta sell it. Grell, we've we've done nine takes. If he was emotionless in the first one and, and the second one and And anyway, you know what I mean. I don't think it's gonna change now. I believe that I am adequately emotive. The fact that you would say that makes me so very mad right now. Forgive me for trying to have a little fun with this bizarre topic. Eish. Jeez. Well, to be fair, as I said earlier, the majority of mammals eat their own placenta, so it's statistically the most normal thing for us to do. Yeah, when when I was a kid, I had a cat who did this. Uh, moving on. The eating of placenta isn't new, but it is gaining a lot of traction around the world. Famous folk like Kim and Kourtney Kardashian are doing it, Mayim Bialik had a little taste, and in 2006, Tom Cruise said he'd eat Katie Holmes' placenta. Sure, of course he would. Well, who needed to sleep anyways? But is this just another hokey pseudoscientific alternative medicine, or is it backed by more than just celebrity endorsements? Human consumption of placenta is called placentophagy, while animal consumption of placenta is called placentophagia. We have two main hypotheses as to why it exists in nature. The first is to avoid predators from being able to pinpoint a newborn based on the scent of the placenta. And the second is nest cleanliness, because who wants a pile of meat lying in your nest attracting flies? This is contestable though. Sophia K. Johnson, MD of Friedrich Schiller University Jenna's Placenta Lab of the Clinic of Obstetrics and Gynecology, in a meta-analysis of 46 different papers entitled Placenta, Worth Trying? Human Maternal Placentophagy. Possible Benefit and Potential Risks notes that many squirrels choose to consume their placenta when they could simply discard it from their nests. And for many cloven-hooved mammals, placentophagia doesn't alter any major changes in infant mortality. The underlying drive behind placentophagia is still up in the air. Researchers have also seen that our closest evolutionary relatives, apes, also consume placenta. So, they believe that our aversion to consuming it is a tradition that developed over years of evolution. It is also possible that the consumption of placenta is linked to the mother's need to increase caloric intake after an energy-consuming birth. However, it's assumed that most women in industrialized nations wouldn't need to resort to this, as their diets are likely diverse and full enough to survive post-birth. The modern health claims for humans is that the consumption of placenta can help ward off postpartum depression and increase post-birth energy levels in the mother. Sorry gentlemen, there isn't much of a point for you to eat it. Postpartum depression is caused by a few things. Primarily, a dramatic drop of estrogen and progesterone after giving birth, and secondarily by an increase in stress and anxiety dealing with a newborn, among other things. That being said, placentophagy has been around a little longer than our knowledge of hormones, and predates the very concept of depression. So what were their incentives towards this practice? William Ober, MD, argues that one of the first historical references to human placentophagy comes from ancient Egypt's King Nirmer. In an image of King Nirmer, he is seen with a standard emblazoned with a placenta and umbilical cord. Ober notes that the ancient Egyptians believed a child was formed from the mother's blood not shed during gestation, and that the placenta was a reserve of vital life material. So it would be seen as a symbol of life and power for a king on a military campaign. The Old Testament's Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, also contained references to placentophagy. 
According to Ober, the speaker in this passage warns the Israelites of the punishment for going against the word of God, threatening siege and war, in which women would eat their own placentas instead of feeding their children. Ober argues that if we can consider the Bible to reflect the cultures of the time, this passage can point toward the attitudes toward placentophagy in cultures in and around the Middle East. The Bible, as read by Ober, is making value judgments of the cultures with which Israelites would be familiar, using placentophagy as a marker of barbarism to reinforce the need for faith in God. Placentophagy has also been documented in China since the late 16th century. In The Great Pharmacopoeia of 1596, Li Shi Chen recommends a mixture of breast milk and placenta for an illness called qi exhaustion. Oh, it's like, it's like one of those video game thingies, um, a mana potion. Kind of. Qi exhaustion is characterized by anemia, weakness in your extremities, coldness in your uh, sexual organs, and premature ejaculation? Well, I'm glad you all have a sound bite of that. Essentially, the remedy consisted of three cups of breast milk with a sprinkling of dried powdered placenta on top, which was then left out to warm in the sun before drinking, which doesn't sound like it tastes that good, but health-wise, it was equal to non-placentophagic remedies for the same illnesses in Europe. Since the placenta is the tissue through which nutrients pass from mother to offspring, the theory for modern mothers is that by eating it, you can recoup some of those nutrients and get a blast of pregnancy hormones that will be quickly dropping after giving birth. But what is actually in human placenta, hormone and nutrient-wise? So, what's the big tissue? Did you hear that? The study Placenta, worth trying, writes that a single placenta weighing 450 grams contains an average of 234 calories, 4 grams of fat, 899 milligrams of cholesterol, 513 grams of sodium, 48 grams of protein, and a plethora of minerals and B vitamins. In terms of hormones, it contains oxytocin, estrogens, progesterone, and human placentolactogen. Researchers found these hormones in both raw and dried placenta. However, the concentrations of these hormones were drastically reduced in the dried caplets. It remains debatable though, whether the hormones become biologically available after intake as steroid hormones are poorly absorbed when taken orally according to our study from the University of Jena, and the risk associated with ingesting one's own placenta following a spontaneous, non-interventional delivery without long-term pharmacological treatment during pregnancy is relatively low. So the benefits aren't confirmed, but what are these risks? If one receives anesthesia during delivery, then the consumption of placenta is not recommended as it could absorb opioids or other anesthetics. Likewise, if a mother smokes during pregnancy, then the levels of cadmium in the placenta would increase and can cause damage to the liver and kidneys. There is also risk of bacterial infection if the placenta is not stored safely. The CDC and Health Canada have advised against consuming placenta, as it can contain infectious agents such as bacteria and viruses, and that the preparation process could also potentially introduce infectious agents. According to a report published by CDC in 2017, an infant in Oregon contracted a serious bacterial infection caused by B. streptococcus, a bacteria also known as GBS, which is normally part of our healthy gut microbiome but can cause severe invasive infections in newborns and people with compromised immune systems. The baby was treated, but he ended up in the ER only five days later. Upon investigation, the bacteria's source was traced to capsules his mother had been taking, containing her dry placenta that was prepared by a private company. The CDC report states that the encapsulation process might not have reached a high enough temperature for enough time to eliminate the bacteria, which may have resulted in the mother carrying colonies of the GBS in her intestine and on her skin, inadvertently transferring it to her baby. As there are no regulations or standards in place for companies providing placenta dehydration and encapsulation, the bacteria that led to the infection in our case was found only after the baby got seriously ill for the second time. It's true the placenta contains a good amount of pregnancy hormones. However, it's not certain if the oral consumption of placenta is an efficient method of acquiring them. A 1918 study did find a link between consumption of placenta and breast milk production, which is 
great, but is it the primary concern of those consuming placenta today? In the end, placenta worth trying argues that since the bacteria in our CDC case wasn't found in the mother's breast milk, it could be assumed that the stomach functions as a barrier against bacteria, and that it may be likely the GPS transmission was due to close contact of mother and baby after birth. They conclude, even if the described effects of placenta ingestion were attributable to a placebo effect, mother and child could in certain cases benefit from improved well-being and better health while being exposed to a low individual risk. That is, if it's prepared safely, of course. Let's get one thing straight. I'm not a parent. Not really. Taking care of myself is hard enough. Bean does rely on me for some things, but his species can survive in the vacuum of space, so honestly I think he's the one taking care of me. We all would go great lengths to keep the ones we love safe and healthy, let alone what a parent would do for their child. As of now, it appears that eating your placenta may have some health benefits for both mother and child, however, some of those benefits can be attributable to the placebo effect. If you go through sanitary channels to prepare your placenta for your own consumption, there is little risk involved. And if it means a healthier, stronger baby, well, who am I to tell you how to raise your children? Just speak to your doctor about it. They'll give you a recommendation with you and your child's best interests in mind.